Now let's see why append is tail recursive. We will do this by means of the kernel language. So I will first introduce the kernel language, and then we will translate append into the kernel language. So let me bring in a diagram here. So this diagram shows the kernel language of the functional paradigm that we have seen so far. So we have here a grammar definition. We have here S, which is a statement. The X's and the Y's are identifiers. And the V here is a value. And these are the instructions we've seen so far. So we have sequential composition, an instruction followed by another one, introduction of a local identifier, and then binding two identifiers together, an identifier with a value, a conditional, procedure definition, a procedure call, and the case statement. We also have numbers and lists. So this is what we saw. Remember, the kernel language, as we presented it in the first lesson, is the small language inside of a paradigm that shows the essential concepts of the paradigm. So a rich practical language that programmers use can always be translated into the kernel language. So all the conveniences have kernel language translations. And with this, we will see exactly what happens in the execution. Now let's do this for append. Now notice the append is a function here. In the kernel language, we only have procedures and not functions. Well, why is this? Well, functions and procedures are very closely related. The difference, the only difference, is that a function has a result and a procedure if it has any outputs, does so by binding its arguments. So in the kernel language, we've chosen to have only procedures, and functions are then defined by coding them as procedures. So the function append is a procedure append with one extra argument, L3. So L3 represents the output. Okay. Now let me write this using the instructions of the kernel language, L1 of nil, then L3 is equal to L2. Else, notice the case statement of the kernel language only has one pattern. Else case L1 of H1 bar T1. Then, now I have to do this uh, operation where I have H1 bar append T1 L2. In order to do that, I have to bring in another identifier. So I need a local. So I have H, no, L3 is equal to H1 bar T3. And then I do a recursive call, which is T1 L2 T3. And, 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 and. So I close all the instructions. And now I have my new definition here. Let me call it here, define it and call it. In fact, we can see that in Oz, the kernel language is carefully defined to be a subset of the full OS language. And this is a very nice property because it means that you can actually write programs in the kernel language and run them and compare them with programs written in the practical language. So let me run the new version of append and we see, of course, it gives the same result as the other one. Okay. Notice the way that append works as a procedure here is that the third argument is passed in as an unbound variable and is bound inside the execution of the append. And that's how we model functions which have results in terms of procedures with one more argument.